Well, here's my question for you today. How intentional have you been about the stuff that's in your kitchen? In other words, have you curated it? Have you intentionally put each item in here? Or has it become kind of a time capsule? And does it represent all the different whims you've had and different things you've tried and experimented with? Well, welcome to video four in our Minimalism Back to Basics series. You can find the playlist with all of the videos down below. Today, we're gonna to talk about the benefits of a highly simplified kitchen, also three tools that you can use to declutter it extra quickly, and then we'll also answer some frequently asked questions as well. So here are some of the benefits of a highly simplified kitchen. Number one, it is very easy to keep clean. When your drawers and cabinets are only about half full, it's very easy to put stuff away, and our kitchen isn't very big, but we still try to keep all of the drawers and cabinets only half full. Number two, it's very easy for your kids to help. Most of us want to involve our kids in cooking and cleaning up after dinner, but when there's too much stuff, it makes it very stressful. Number three, less wasted food. When you have less to manage, it's easier to remember what you have, what's going bad in the back of the fridge, what's in your pantry. We find that we waste so much less food now that our kitchen is simplified. Number four, you're probably gonna find that you cook more and eat out less. It is so expensive to eat out right now, isn't it? And so we've really tried to commit to eating at home and you'll find that in a simplified kitchen, even if you're one that doesn't normally enjoy cooking at home like myself, I've actually really found that I enjoy cooking a lot more when my kitchen is highly simplified. And lastly, I do believe that the kitchen is the heart of the home and when it's neat and tidy, uh, in the words of my husband, Tom, it feels like life is under control. And I honestly, I hadn't noticed it to that point. I noticed that I liked it clean. It felt a lot better when it was, but it does kind of feel like no matter what life throws us on any given day, if the kitchen is tidy, we can handle it. So next, I wanna ask you a few questions so that you can determine how much inventory you should have in your kitchen right now and how to decide what to keep. Then I'll show you those tips for decluttering your kitchen super quickly. So question number one is, what type of cooking are you doing right now? For us, we have four kids ages eight through 13, and it's just a really busy season of life. We try to keep our calendar somewhat clear and limit the number of activities, but it still can just be a lot at times. And so I would label the type of cooking we're doing as quick, fast, maybe even calling it survival cooking. So what type of cooking are you doing right now? So now we've determined what type of cooking you're doing, let me ask you this. Would you be willing to move some stuff out of your kitchen so that it would function better. So last fall was when things really started getting busy. And so I decided to move everything out of our kitchen that we weren't currently using. It was a lot of things like extra casserole dishes, extra cake pans, some extra utensils, and even some extra small kitchen appliances. And I totally fell in love with our kitchen again. And so today I'm here to give you permission to say it is okay to move stuff out of your kitchen that you are not currently using in this season or with this style of cooking that you're doing so that you too can have a kitchen that is super easy to tidy and where you're more likely to cook. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a few containers and I'm gonna show you how you can declutter your kitchen super quickly. We wanna have a donation box. We also wanna have a time will tell bin. We talked about this in our back to basics video, how to declutter. So I'm not gonna go into full detail about this and then also a black trash bag. So I'm gonna to go to a space like our utensil drawer. Now, most people have way too many utensils, but how do you know how many of each one to keep? I'm gonna look for duplicates. So I'm gonna say, oh wow, we have four pancake clippers. You know, I probably only need one to two at any given time. Again, we're trying to reduce the inventory so our kitchen is very easy to clean and we're more likely to cook. So if I determine that I have a couple extra pancake flippers that I don't need, I can decide, do I wanna put them straight into the donation bin? Do I feel confident that I can get by without them? Or would I rather time test them and put them in my time will tell bin? And then I can hold something else up like the lemon juicer and say, oh, I can't even remember the last time I, I used this. I think I'm just gonna donate it. Maybe this pizza cutter is broken, so I'm just gonna put it straight into my garbage bag. Oh wow, I didn't even realize that I have three pie servers. I'm gonna put this one in the time will tell bin. And we can get through very quickly if when we find duplicates and extras, we know that it has to go into one of these three containers. And the time will tell bin can be super helpful, especially if you're coming across things that were kind of expensive. So we can put it in the time will tell bin, create a little separation, and then in three to 
six months, revisit this, and you're gonna find that it's gonna be a whole lot easier to donate it then. Okay, but how do we decide how many to keep? How many place settings? How many forks? How many cups? Well, for our family, less is more. It really comes down to your habits. Does your family have the habit of running the dishwasher every single night so you don't really have the problem of tons of dishes piling up next to it? Our family was not as diligent with that, so we decided just to have one place setting per person plus two extras. And that has worked really well for us because it's self-limiting, meaning family members can't just keep pulling out more and more dishes because they don't wanna wash them. We have two glasses for each person and roughly two to three pieces of silverware per person in our family. We also have a company bin in the basement, so if we have extra people joining us, I can grab that out and then we have plenty of dishes for everyone or we just use paper products. Similarly, I found that for pots and pans that four to five is plenty. Now, depending on where you're at, this might just sound a little silly, but again, this is where the time will tell bin comes in really handy. Most of us have never tried living with a lot less, so we don't know what we can get by with. But I do want to assure you that this highly limiting the inventory in our kitchen is what makes it function so well. We also have a printable called Minimalism by the Numbers that gives the exact inventory of our entire kitchen, and that's available for a donation of $5 down below. All proceeds go to charity for that. And real quick, let's talk about small appliances because we can have a lot of money wrapped up in gadgets in our kitchen. I like to use the one year rule. If you haven't used it in the past year, I think you should consider removing it from your kitchen. Whether that means you're just storing it elsewhere or selling it or putting it in a time will tell bin, I think it's a really good idea to test out not having it in your kitchen and see how your kitchen feels. Also remember that just getting the Ninja blender doesn't make it so we have smoothies every single morning. We still have to take the time to create the new habit and that actually takes a lot of extra bandwidth. When we were talking about cognitive load, a lot of us don't have the capacity right now for fancy cooking or for learning new ways of cooking or creating these new habits in our lives. And that's okay, some things just have to wait their turn. But let's not keep that expensive blender in our cabinet continually mocking us, reminding us how much money we spent on it and we're not using it and we're not achieving our health goals. None of us need that. So let's consider moving that out and really enjoy the extra space that it frees up and how it makes your kitchen feel like a more positive place to be. All right, so we're gonna answer some questions that often come up with this topic too, but I really wanna encourage you that your kitchen should serve you no matter what season of life you're in. Remember that every single item in our kitchen is a tool. It's meant to make our life easier. And isn't it amazing how one pizza cutter, super helpful, we really need it five pizza cutters, that becomes a burden. So this stuff goes from valuable asset to burden very quickly when we let the inventory creep up. So remove the duplicates and the items that you're just not using and your kitchen is gonna function so much better. Okay, so question number one, should I sell things in our kitchen? So again, I've talked about this before, but we had a $50 threshold for anything that we sold. Question number two, what if you have a spouse or other member of your household who does most of the cooking and they have a lot of inventory in your kitchen? That can get a little bit tricky, but I still do think using the time will tell bin with them could be really helpful. What about food storage containers? So I learned this trick from Dana from A Slob Comes Clean, and that is to store your food storage containers with the lids on. And I know what you're gonna say, you can't fit nearly as many. We don't need as many food storage containers as we've been keeping. What about grocery inventory? So inventory is inventory. I find for myself that I just can't manage even as much grocery inventory as I could in the past. And so we keep our grocery inventory, as far as our everyday food here in the kitchen, pretty low, but I do have some emergency backup food storage that we keep down in the basement. It's not extra stuff that we use on a regular basis. I don't go to Costco and stock up on a lot of stuff, keep extra down there and then have to bring it in here. That's just too much inventory for me to manage in this season of life. But really the stuff in the basement is just meant to be emergency backup. And then I keep our regular food that we cook with week in and week out up here in the kitchen. All right, well, I really hope this helps. Truly, simplifying our kitchen is one of the best things that we've done. And this is probably the room in our house where I have noticed the biggest impact by lowering our inventory. So I really wanna encourage you to go further than you think with simplifying, and I think you're really gonna fall in love with your kitchen again. All right, well, if you wanna see the next video in the series, you can click the link down in the description or off here to the side, and I'll see you in the next video.